Hello there, YouTube. I've gotten some recent requests to go back over and update my Reaper video, what I do playing as a Reaper in Terra. And uh, I decided uh, well, a little bit ago that I've, I've kind of wanted to revisit this too, since so much has changed in my setup. Uh, right now I have full Conflate plus 12 gear which is the PvP set. I still run dungeons with this. Um, I could go out and get, you know, the slaughter weapon and plus 12 it for the third time because I keep dismantling it, sell the feedstock, make some quick money. But um, I do just fine in dungeons with this. I, I could, I could, things compensate for not having PvE rolls uh, pretty well but instead of just sitting here and showing you and you know expecting you to understand it I'm just gonna go run a dungeon real quick see if I could get matched for something simple so I don't really have to think so I'll match for channel works and there it is and I'm gonna be running the DPS meter for this and I'm gonna run my setup the way I usually do like if I was doing something like demo factory something crazy like that so I'll get all my buffs on that I usually use and uh, you'll be able to see the DPS meter for this which will be fun and I keep wanting to write them out I'm gonna go fast Hopefully these guys need something from this. So first thing I usually do on a boss, and I messed up there, but it's whatever, is I'll use this skill. What is that? Shadow Reaping, that's what it is. I don't remember the names of the, the, the skills sometimes. And then I'll just go full force doing smite. You know, that thing over and over. On, a, on the back, and that'll build uh, with the one, uh, what is it, is it forcefulness? Find forceful. And that'll help build up crit power and all that other stuff while um, I'm getting the back. And um, I'm getting out dps right now by this gunner, right? Yeah, whatever. But yeah, you, you build up the back crits, you build up the, the forceful and all that. You go in with the double shear and the sundering strike, that's another good one. This I have linked into my Grim Strike, and if you end up building your chest with uh, increased, uh, increased skill damage to Grim Strike, it's really nice. Because you just go in like that, so, double shear, sundering strike, then you get the back build up more, and then you go in again. And you just kind of do that over and over. That's always really good to do. And you got to remember to pop your brooch. I, I don't know if there's a lot of 65s that don't realize you have to activate it, but you have to activate it. No, oh, he's just going to reset, isn't he? Adorable. Look at him. Look at him going places. I didn't even know you could get back here, but that's cool, you know? I'm really confused right now. And, like, if you're doing Demo Factory, you could use that, Soul Reversal, Stun the priest, I mean the, the sorcerer, and um, that works really well. You know, I just, if a f <laughs> there was one uh, game where like it was just a trash party, and um, I think the tank ended up dying and stuff like that. So I was a Reaper tank for a little bit while I was waiting for people to get rezzed, and um, it was pretty easy because you just soul reversal, 
Stun them if that doesn't work. Smite them. If that doesn't work. Cable step them. Eventually he'll get stunned. And yeah, it works pretty well. You always got to build your mana back. So use the, the what is that? Shadow Lash, that's what it's called. You don't gotta know the names of the moves to be good. You don't. I wonder what this gunner's doing here. I'm gonna kinda break my rule and I'm gonna inspect. Yeah. Okay. Lucid. Lucid and Starfall. Neat. Now that's the reason I got the Conflate. My guild has helped me out get the Conflate gear. And uh, it only goes plus 12. Tensis, I think, could be awoken and go plus 15. Um, but I, I don't want to put the, the time and resources into that kind of equipment just yet. So here, I'll do it the normal way here. Build up that. You always gotta get behind. It's real easy to do if you're on a Reaper. After this, I'll show you the glyph setup that I use. It hasn't changed all that much, I don't think, since the last video, but it, I haven't watched that last video before doing this. Now my crit used to be a whole lot higher. I still believe for PvE to go full crit. But I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm going to have little changes with that. Maybe crit power mixed in there. But then I would have to get a separate uh, set of jewelry and uh, gear and all that kind of crap. If I wasn't in a hurry, I would have waited there and have been nice to that person that might have needed some of that gear since he gets teleported out as being last. But you get the picture with that. So here's my glyph setup that I run for both PvE and PvP. And the important part here is the chain skills. I believe in using the chain skills and not using the space bar. I am a person who will use exactly what these are on my keyboard as I'm playing. I'll, you know, be going around. The first thing I do is I hit five, six. You know, I've talked about that before. I don't like being a spacebar warrior. My jump is not spacebar. My jump is middle mouse, and the spacebar does just the chains, and I don't touch it. Um, but yeah, so usually I start off you know, if you want to talk about the whole rotation, I actually have it all set up here. So Death Spiral, as you could see, has increased damage of Grim Strike by 25% for a few seconds. So it goes to Grim Strike. What's Grim Strike uh, glyphed for? Eliminate cooldown, speeds casting of double shear, and doubles the crit factor. I don't have the triple one yet. So you go from that into double shear. Where's Double Shear? Double Shear's up here. And then you have Double Shear doesn't have anything on it. And because I could start with Double Shear and have that link into Grim Strike, as you could see, you know, increased skill damage. But the Death Spiral has 25% instead of 20%. So I use that. And then the Double Shear goes into a Sundering Strike. 
The Sundering Strike has glyphs for increased skill damage and doubling the chance of crit. And oh, it's right under. Then Sundering Strike goes in the Smite, but sun, but sun, yeah, like I said, 15%, double the chance to crit. Smite, effect duration, and decreased cooldown is glyphed. And I have Smite going in the Pendulum Strike. And then Pendulum Strike into the Whiplash, or the Whipsaw. And then, does Whipsaw? Yeah, Whipsaw goes back into my Double Shear. And you know where Double Shear goes, and then that is just a forever loop. And then on the top row, I have my more utility-based things. So I have the cable step, which goes in the shadow burst. And then the shadow burst goes into shadow lash. And the shadow lash even go into anything, it doesn't go into anything. Yeah, it doesn't. And that's my rotation there. It's really just, you know, you start it off doing the Death Spiral, Grim Strike. If you have to decrease cooldown, that, that instant thing where you could just spam it, then you just spam it. And then um, Double Shear, Sundering Strike, Smite, Pendulum, Whipsaw, Double Shear, and then you just loop it, loop it, loop it works pretty well that way and then you end up doing the utility to get your mana back and put a little extra damage in works pretty well let's see is there anything else i got my shadow step fully um glyphed here for the decreased cooldown and movement speed works pretty well and back to my gear and i'll talk about pvp I'm not the best PvPer. I have shaky hands. Um, I could go on about that, but I won't. But it, it, even if you don't have the the motor skills to do PvP, you could at least have, you know, the mindset and the the strategy, the strategery to to do PvP properly. And if your gear could complement that, then it helps. And right now, I have the Conflate weapon. I got the top roll for attack speed. I got decreased uh, cooldown. I got PvP damage and more attack speed. And then all of the you know pluses for more attack speed. And then the crystals I have in that are Forceful, Salivating, Swift, and Savage. Then you go to the gloves. Oh, I'm, before I get to the gloves, etchings, very important. I have etching on my weapon for more attack speed. So that brings my attack speed, you know, fully buffed the way I like to be. 46, plus 46. Actually, no, because I have the bravery potion on. That's an additional 4% you might not be. Well, you can't use that in Battlegrounds, and it's not good nature to use it in a duel, so I think it's 43, something like that. Um, so let's go to the gloves. Gloves are also etched for attack speed, and they have the only orange roll you could do. That's just the only, only way you could roll that. So then we move to the boots. Again, only way you could roll that, really. And those are also etched. I got those etched with a permanent max HP increase. Same thing with my chest max HP increase. And this is, this is, um, I think this might be the role I stick with. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's a pretty good role. It's got the Grim Strike by 12, decreasing damage while knocked down, 
by 6.9, decreasing PvP damage as a whole by 6%, and decreasing damage taken from the front by 6.9. I might change that one into back. I think there is a back one. That's that's resources. That's spell binds and bullshit. Then I got the belt, and that's rolled for power and crit factor. I have the shadow gate earring and a blood gate. Same thing you do with ship. You know, you have one of each. Blood, shadow. So one is decreased duration of stun by 10 and a crit resist factor. And this one has decreased duration of stun and max HP. You go to the ring. Crit factor 2, power 2. Crit factor 2, power 4. And it could be better rolls on those things, but whatever. Now I got my quick carve, which is a perfect roll of all crit factor four and six. I got my necklace, similar. I think you could go up to a crit factor of six, I think. But I got a crit factor of four on it. And yeah, I mean, that's that's my PvP setup. And also my PvE, just different crystals. Um, as you can see, the crystals that I'm using are also attack speed. You want to be as fast as you can, and you want your cooldowns to go away as quick as possible. I learned this the hard way. Um, it, it's it's a whole lot better than going for straight crit for um for PvP. Uh, let's see. Are there any other things I should mention here? When it comes to this, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, what would I change if I wanted to go into PVE at this point instead of getting another slaughter weapon? I would probably go for. Yeah, I would probably go for Starfall. Uh, Starfall, no, Starfall uh, weapon for PvE with uh, possibly uh, the gloves, maybe. Let me let me take a look. So let's see. It's for the archer. I forget what the difference is by on a whip. So that's okay. Um, I'll just go plus twelve. Increased damage, yeah, yeah, because then you end up getting monster, monster, monster rolls. And for the handwear, twelve. Uh, you get PvP attack. It's lower than mine is, I think. Because mine's a percentage. Yeah, damage. And, no, yeah, I wouldn't go for the gloves. Unless you... Plus 15, really. Because that's what... 4,000 plus 3... Say, I mean, I get, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not, uh, I mean, I would go for the Starfall weapon and that is maybe it. Because everything else seems to be better with what I currently have. So yeah, I would get a Starfall weapon or I'd get an Imperator weapon rather than uh, anything else at this point.
So just apply that. You got this. Yeah. I'm still. It's. I mean, it just has the more more rolls. Attack by thirty. It's confusing when in this game they don't define the difference between a damage percentage. What damage is it taking? Is it increasing my attack just like it does a flat damage? Or is it just taking anything um, that has a flat PvP damage number and increasing it? It's confusing. Like if I had uh, griefing on, then yeah, you don't you don't know the PvP stats, and that's where it gets really confusing. But for PVE, I could definitely tell you Starfall or Imperator or Slaughter over um the conflate weapon for it but um you can do just fine using the conflate weapon and the whole set for pve if you're going for a high dps run change it to a pve uh weapon entirely if you're working on the conflate set mix and match between um really dread and the conflate get the the conflate belt is the best belt right now in the game it just is and i mean i'll show it out here Let's see conflate belt Uh, street defense. You got Imperator. You got Slaughter. You got Starfall. So that's what I'll look at. So, you got your. I'll just focus on the defense for now. So, you got a defense for the Conflict Belt of 29.85. And does that line up with mine? 29.85. Okay. Wait, I actually still might. I could just go to my bank. This is a whole lot more interesting. Okay, so you like belts? I like belts. So, got the conflate belt. I'm not gonna fo I got this from a vault. It's fine. You got the slaughter belt. Dread, you're going out of here. You got the Starfall belt. Let's take a look at them here. Get a higher item level with the Conflict belt. You get a higher defense modifier with the Conflict belt. You get higher balance, the Conflict belt. You get same max HP, it looks like, across the board. You get the same power, you get the same endurance. You, I'm pretty sure you get the same exact rolls as any other belt. It has higher defense, higher balance, and a higher item level in the same everything else. And it's so cheap to get. Uh, I believe it's, no, it's another one. Yep, conflate belt. So it's eighty thousand belly creds, and to make it really low cost of mats, you get the contarginate node ten, flatorum node five, and culvit ingots thirty. That's nothing, and then you could have the best belt in the game. And I suggest that you get that as soon as possible, as soon as you can. There's no reason to not have it. Okay. 
Even if you're not doing PvP, it doesn't have PvP roles. It's just a good belt. Um, but yeah, I hope something about this was uh, helpful, formative. Uh, ask me some questions and uh, I'll research some other stuff because I've been I've been busy doing a, oh I can't do it in here but I've been busy doing a whole lot of different spreadsheets just for myself kind of and sometimes to prove a point to my guild about different gear after working out the numbers um, so I've, I've been going ham uh, into really analyzing gearing in this game um, so yeah, if you got any questions, just please post a comment. I'd be glad to try to figure out the answer.